I'm back, broken, healing, and continuing my journey through grief. Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Sheila, and I thank you so much for being here today. For any of you that are new, I lost my beloved mother a month ago today on January the 14th, and I'm going to be talking about the grief today. Before I get started, I want to thank each and every one of you for all your beautiful, loving, and kind comments on the video that Dave put up doing a tribute to my ma. I read every comment, cried over every comment. I did not reply. I think Dave replied to a few, but I gave a heart and a thumbs up to all of you. I also want to thank you all who have sent me private messages just checking on me and seeing how I was doing. That was such a loving, kind, and thoughtful thing to do. I want to thank my friend Linda from the channel Mature Sass, who I communicate with regularly, who texted me often to check on me. Connie Murphy, who has always asked about my ma through the years as she was going through her dementia. And Connie has sent me some emails, and I am so very grateful to you, Connie. Lynn, Mary, Jean, and there may be a couple others. Please forgive me if I have forgotten but I thank you all so, so very much. It meant a great deal to me. Well, as the title of this video went, uh, Broken, Healing, and My Journey Through Grieving. Broken in a couple ways, two ways. Of course, I was broken hearted when I lost my ma. I was very broken, and I am on the healing journey, and on top of that, I also broke my wrist. Yep, sure did, so I'm broken in more ways than one. I'll insert a, a picture here somewhere. I ended up in the emergency room two days after my ma passed because I fell doing a stupid thing. And it ended up that I broke my wrist on both sides. I think this is called the distal radius fracture. And that's the bones that are on this side of the thumb and run down. And then this one is called, oh, it starts with an A. And it runs down this way. So I really did a number on it and also all through here in the joint. It was not fun and I did not need this at this time. What I did was I decided I needed to keep myself busy because I was very very lost and again this was just two days after my mother passed. So of course I threw myself into my cleaning which I love to do and I was emptying out the uh, pantry. When we buy things in bulk like in cardboard boxes we set them on the floor in the pantry and then eventually I open those boxes put the stuff on the shelves and then I crush the boxes to uh, Put them in the recycle bin. So this is the box that did the damage. It's a 12 pack of Ensure, which I drink every day. I took all the containers out 
and then here's the box. Well, I put it in the hallway. I stood on it to smash it. It wouldn't budge. I'm telling you, this is cardboard, but it's got to be lined with steel or something because this box would not crush at all. And I stood on it two or three different times. Nothing. It wouldn't give an inch. So I decided the last time uh, Dave and my brother-in-law Kenny had come in so I asked one of them if they could crush this box. And I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I just thought they would think, you know, I'm being silly or something because I said it wouldn't crush. And I said, look, you're not going to believe this. This box will not crush. So they were standing right there. I stood on the box. It didn't budge. And then I kind of gave up kind of like a heave-ho, you know, kind of did like this. And the back side of the box went down. It crushed a little, which made the front side flip up. So the box went from here to like here. And when it did that, it was like a springboard. And it just threw me backwards. And just instantly, I mean, they, they couldn't even catch me. It happened that fast. Of course, when you fall backwards like that, you put your hands down, and that's how I snapped my wrist and really shattered it. And I fell on my left side, and so that's why it was the left hand. Oh, boy. Well, I was just, I guess, hoping that I sprained it or something. I just didn't want to deal with it. We had just been in the emergency room the week before, I believe, because Dave had a problem with his sugar. It was very high, so we had to go to the ER. And then my mother passed away, and then two days later, I did this. So the next day, we went to the ER. I mean, it was pretty bad. And, of course, it was broken. And... I'll insert a picture here. They wrapped it, but I'm telling you, in the ER, they wrap them so big and thick. I mean, my arm looked this big. It was so heavy. You know, they put so much wrapping, and they do it clear up to your fingertips, so you can't even move. And the orthopedic surgeon, who I went to the day after, of course, put a real cast on it and said, you know, they should never wrap up to here. Your fingers need to be exposed. So for the first two weeks, oh my gosh, this was so swollen. My arm was swollen clear up to here. This was so tight. My fingers were swollen. I couldn't move my fingers. It was not fun. When I went to the orthopedic clinic, they said I would need surgery. I would need a plate and screws and all that. When I went to the orthopedic surgeon, when he walked in, I told him right up front, I said, I don't want to waste your time or mine. No surgery. I do not want surgery. And he was very kind. And he said, well, you don't have to. And he knew there was no way. So he went ahead and cast it and told me I would be in the cast for six weeks. So it will come off next Wednesday, which will be February the 22nd. I don't know, you know, what's from there. If they put like, maybe I have to wear a little brace or something. I don't know. Um, they may recommend physical therapy. I would imagine they would. But I'm not going to go to physical therapy. I've already watched physical therapy channels online. I'm going to do my own exercises. Plus, I have a built-in physical therapist. He's not a physical therapist yet. But my grandson, Tr Tristan, works in a physical therapy office as an assistant so he goes through you know these different exercises and things that people have to do for injuries to various body parts so 
I can just use him here at home to help me if I have to do that. Needless to say, for the first oh, about three weeks, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I've used this elbow so much as a second hand that it's actually sore, sore to touch. I lean on a toothpaste tube with this elbow to squeeze out the toothpaste. I put this elbow on a plate when I'm washing dishes to hold the plate still because I can't use, couldn't use the hand. Now my fingers work. Dave did my hair for the first couple weeks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he tried, but I'm telling you, <laughs> he would put um, those hot rollers in it. I only did it twice a week. And I had so many fish hooks in my hair because, you know, you have to wrap the ends around the roller to get it very smooth. And he wouldn't know how to do that. I mean, he doesn't even have to comb his hair. He's bald headed. So all the ends weren't rolled right and they were all sticking out like little fish hooks. I could have caught a dozen fish or more with this hair. And... The only thing he could do is pull it all up in a ponytail. So, needless to say, I didn't leave the house. Oh, I haven't left the house anyhow except to go uh, to the orthopedic doctor for this. But anyhow, um, I have use of this hand now. Not real good, but I can maneuver it enough to kind of hold my hair up and pin it right here. To stick it up or I use this to kind of hold it up and uh, so I'll be looking a little scraggly for at least another week until I get this off. I feel like only one half of my body is clean you know on the upper half I could use my right hand to wash this part of my arm this armpit and everything but there was no way I could get this hand over and use these fingers to wash this armpit or wash this arm. I can't put any pressure. I have no grip or anything yet with these fingers and it was terrible the first couple weeks. So I feel like half of my head has been washed, half of my body has been clean. I wash my hair, I can scrub over here, but it's kind of hard to get over here like this you know you're used to doing like this so anyhow that's my long story about being broken in the heart and in the wrist now i wondered why did this happen i did not need this and i mean i know it could be so much worse i did fall on my left side and the first thing i thought of was my hip because you know they say when you're older and I will be 72 come May, you know, that it's easy to break a hip, and my hip was sore, but I figured, well, it's okay. But when I checked it a couple days later, because when I touched it, it was very tender. Well, it was all black and blue, and from having that hard of a fall onto a hard floor, it pulled a groin muscle, a muscle in my groin that runs from the pubic bone down your inner thigh to your knee. So then I couldn't walk. Oh my gosh. Needless to say, I was a mess. You have to laugh and wonder, why now? Why did this have to happen now? And you know, maybe it was God's way of giving me a distraction uh, that's just something that I thought of to distract me from the grief or from falling into a deep, dark pit, which I was already there. Or maybe it was his way to make me rest. Of course, I was tired, worn out, run down, being at the nursing home every single day, all day long for a month it was very tiring so you know that way he knew i wouldn't rest on my own so maybe that's why regardless i'm doing fine 
and I can't complain because like I said, it could have been so much worse. I also wanted to talk about grief in this video. I'll try to keep it short because I think I just wasted 10 minutes talking about this doggone rest. But anyhow, the grief process, I'm sure, is different for everybody. Now, they say there are five stages of grief. I think it's something like shock, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance, etc. Somewhere around there. Um, I agree with the shock part. I think even if you know it's coming and you think you're prepared, you're always shocked. You're never prepared to lose someone that you love so dearly. So the shock part is real. As far as the other stages, they, I don't believe in them for me and my situation. I can understand where they would come into play in other situations. If you lost a spouse, um, a young person, um, a child, something like that, I could understand it. But my mother would have been 97 in April. And how can you be angry that she died? I mean, she lived a long life. She was so tired of living. And she was almost 97. So I'm grateful that God took her out of her suffering and took her home. There would be no anger there. Depression, no. Deep sorrow, absolutely. To my core, there is deep sorrow, but not depression. Bargaining, what is there to bargain about? I wouldn't bargain with God and say, oh, if you could just let her live, you know, another year or two. Why? She was suffering she had dementia, she was blind, she was elderly, so no bargaining. And as far as acceptance, not sure how I feel about that yet. I don't know if you ever accept it. I mean, maybe in some ways you do, but in other ways you don't. I don't know. It's too early in the process for me. As far as closure, I know a lot of people, again, they say with these stages of grief and then eventually, I don't know, magically at one year or something, you come to a place of closure. I don't believe that in any situation, whether it's a child, someone young, or somebody a hundred years old. There will never, ever be closure as far as I'm concerned. Closure doesn't exist you will always, I will always, have a hole in my heart. And I don't need to heal that to move on. And I don't believe in moving on. Because I don't think you move on from grief. You can move forward in your life. But you can't move on. At least in my opinion. Also for me, where there is grief there is joy. They are intertwined as far as I'm concerned. They go hand in hand. Yes, you grieve deeply, but you also have joy in your heart from all your memories, from all the love, from having that person in your life, from all the happiness they brought you, all the joyful moments. How could you ever put those aside or not think about those, even during grief. I think they coexist. And I also think grief and love are intertwined and go hand in hand. Because if you didn't have such a deep love for someone, you wouldn't have such deep grief. I mean, grief is going to live in your heart, but so is love. So they're there together. 
to me, grief and love are a package deal. And you know, we're all going to go through grief. Many of us, I know many of you out there, have been through it time and time again with children, with your spouses, with your parents, with siblings. Grief is something we're all going to have to deal with. None of us are getting out of here alive. And remember, someday you will be the person that someone is grieving over. And grief can be a teacher. It can teach us to be grateful, grateful for having that person in our lives and for all that they gave to us, all the love, all the happiness, all the joy. So grief can be a teacher as well. I want my kids to know that when someone is lost to death, they don't have to be lost to life. I wouldn't want that for them. And I know my mother definitely would not have wanted that for me. But grief is the price we pay for love. And it's worth it to love someone that much. So I know my grieving process has just begun. I've got a long way to go. It may never end. But it's going to coexist with joy and with love and with peace because I know I have all that through my God. My mother was a big part of my channel for me. I mean, I talked about her so much. I've done videos with her at the nursing home and I'm going to continue to talk about her. In fact, I think my next video will be everything that I learned from my mother, everything that my mother taught me. And it's not the things you think that it would be. So I think I'll do a video on that. I think I find it healing to talk about it. It's not good to keep it inside, and I tend to do that. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep my mother and her memory very much alive. She is still with me right here. Just because she's not physically here, she's still here with me. So I will continue to talk about her. For now, I just have to redefine myself. I definitely lost my identity because Dave and I were her caretakers for six years. Our lives revolved around her and caring for her and giving her the best life we could give her. So now it's kind of like, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm sort of lost, but I know I will find my way. It's just going to take some time. So I guess I'll be redefining my life and figuring out ways to move forward. Not move on, but move forward. I normally post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays and then a shorty video on Sunday. I will get back to that schedule. I don't think I will right now. I'll try. I don't know. It depends on what I feel like. I have good days and bad days. Some days I feel inspired and other days I just feel like I'm in a dark, deep pit. So I'll see. But I am going to do my next video on the things that my mother taught me. And I did a video the week before she took a decline. That was the week before Christmas. It's when my daughter-in-law Nina came down with my grandsons. And my one grandson, Luke, who's 22, I think he'll be 23 in July. Uh, he works at a gym, Gold's Gym, as a trainer. And him and I did a video together 
uh, for lifting weights for seniors, for us old girls, to try to maintain some muscle and keep some strength in our upper bodies. I never got to show that video because three days after that is when my mother really declined. So I will put that video up. And I believe I have a, another Fitville shoe video that should be coming up. I haven't filmed it, but I will within the next week or two. And uh, we'll just see where it goes from there. Anyhow, I'm just rambling on. And I thank you for spending this time with me. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Just know that I love you and I appreciate you so very much. And of course, I'm going to leave you with an inside beauty tip. My inside beauty tip today comes from Philippians 3, 2021. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. That has been a very comforting Bible verse for me along with many others. You know, somebody asked me if my mother was baptized. I believe it was Connie Murphy. And I didn't know because she never talked about those things. So I had no idea if she was or wasn't. I know she was Lutheran, not Catholic. But I don't know if the Lutherans baptize you know, at an early age like the Catholics do. I mean, they baptize, at least they did, before you were two weeks old. But I wasn't sure. And for some reason, that just kept bothering me because I didn't know. So the day that my mother went home to heaven, Dave baptized her. Now, I read that under certain circumstances, like an emergency or a last-minute thing, that any lay person can baptize someone. So he baptized her that afternoon, and she passed away at 6.40 that evening. Also that afternoon, the chaplain came in from hospice, and he prayed over her. That was so comforting. I just find it ironic. I mean, maybe that's what she needed. You know, she needed to be baptized before she could let go because Dave did it about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and at 6.40, she was gone. That tells me a lot. And it also brought me great, great comfort. I thank you so much for being here today and for listening to me. I hope I didn't ramble on too long, but I so much appreciate each and every one of you. And until we meet again, this is the old girl signing out. See ya!